Hello, today I'm going to be ranking all of the Alien vs Predator movies in the order in which they're set. We're going to start with 2022's Prey, which is set in the sort of just beginnings of the European settling and exploration of North America. So it's a long way back in history, this one, despite the fact that it is basically a girl boss movie and that is one of the most overused, tedious tropes in movie history at this point. It actually is quite competently done. There is a danger in 2024 that to see a movie that is this standard and go, that's really good because movies generally these days are so bad. However, I'm certainly not going to get as carried away as some. This movie is competent. It's on the verge of a 6 out of 10, maybe a 7. So I'm going to put it in B, but it is at the bottom end of that part of the scale. Chronologically, the next movie set is Predator, the original, with Arnold Schwarzenegger in it, directed by John McTinnon. This movie is a classic. Everything about this movie is great. I absolutely love it. The The only thing you could say, maybe that's a misstep, is the, is the line, stick around, which is kind of 1980s. Maybe it, it dates the film. Maybe it's out of place in the film. And maybe it's just a slightly amusing one-liner. Depends on your take on it, I suppose. But regardless... The movie's a, a, a great movie, and if it wasn't so good, we would never have actually had a franchise based on it. Predator 2 from 1990 sees Danny Glover and Bill Paxton battling the Predator in a, for the time, vaguely futuristic gang-ridden Los Angeles. When I first saw this, I really, really liked it, but watching it back for this video, I was a little bit surprised it, it wasn't better. It's still one of the better films in the franchise, but that's not saying I'm going to put it in the B's with Prey. Given the choice of the two, I'd say that Prey has a slightly prettier lead, but Predator 2 is just a better, slightly better, slightly more enjoyable film. So the first appearance of an alien on our list is Alien vs. Predator, in, which is based on a computer game and has no original ideas of its own. It in the Antarctic, there's an underground temple, if I remember correctly, in which which rebuilds itself at period, periodic times, which is such a computer game idea. And in there, there's an alien, which the predators have put there so that if humans go in it, they will be taken over by aliens, become aliens, and their predators can then come and hunt the aliens and prove themselves. I think that says enough of it all by itself. What's fun about Alien Predator Requiem is nothing about the movie whatsoever. However, somehow I convinced myself that this movie had Mena Suvari from American Beauty in it. And she played like a, a soldier. I've spent probably about 15 years thinking this movie was really badly treated. But it just turned out I'd watched a different movie and had somehow crosswired my brain because Mena Suvari is not in this film. And what this film actually is, is a little bit like Dawson's Creek. And then there's aliens and some soldiers get slaughtered by them. It's so good that I didn't remember it at all and thought a different movie was it. Next movie is Adrian Brody's Predators, in which a bunch of humans, mercenaries, soldiers, people of that ilk are put on an alien planet. And then the Predator comes to hunt them. And this might have worked in a sort of enemy mind, that episode of Star Trek where they speak in metaphors, that initially we think that they're going to be fighting each other, but it turns out actually they're going to need to, to band together to overcome a different um, enemy. And, and it could have been really good. For example, if you, if you didn't call it Predators and didn't market it using the predator and then halfway through the predator turns up like the triangle appears and doo -doo -doo, and then all of a sudden it's like a complete switch rather like the first film you could actually have had some kind of magic here it might have been really good fun but you can't make a predator film and not use the predator and the in your marketing that's the whole point as far as the studio is concerned it's got nothing to do with art or storytelling it's just about how do we market this so they could never do something like that which means they'll never get that feeling back overall this film is all right it's a little bit disappointing but it's all right and it's sad really that that almost counts as glowing praise in a series because the rest of this series is, is, is diabolical and none more so than 
2018's The Predator, written by Shane Black, who was actually in the first one. There can't be too many movies that are more relentlessly stupid and irritating than this film. You have a perfectly valid alien species with an established motivation, and then you change it in order to have the aliens are now coming to Earth because they want a kid with autism to take back, to take his genes because they're they consider that his autism is like some sort of superpower. And if I tell you that's one of the best things about the movie, you'll understand why it's in the arse end of this ranking. So now we're into the standalone alien films, and we begin with Prometheus. And you have sort of the same issue that plagues the Predator, in that you have an established life cycle of this creature, in that it goes from egg to sort of critter running around to chest bursting, bursting thing that that then swells up into like an, an enormous killing machine, and that is good enough unless you happen to be Prometheus, which then has to reinvent everything and fiddle with everything and change everything, and for the most part, none of the changes actually improve anything. So well done. If you watch alien human curiosity remains a part of it for example that the egg opens up and kane's reaction is to look inside but i think what we experience as we watch that is we know that that's what we would do it's like what's that is a perfectly natural reaction but we also know that nothing good can come of it so there's a humanness to it but in prometheus there isn't that because it's a black dot that could be in the air it could be in the tea there's nothing you can do about it doesn't matter what you do you're just going to die which takes away so much and gives so little that it is just a horrible misstep. I struggle to think of a, a movie that is better cast that then wastes that cast more than Prometheus. It's incredibly disappointing. But as is fairly typical for this series, what follows is even worse because Alien Covenant is just dire. It's clear that somebody said, look, we have to be closer to what's happened before. So they then ape what came before. They have nothing new or original to add. And the whole David, two Davids, the the switcheroo thing is so predictable that actually would have been more of a shock if they hadn't done it. It's just so unoriginal, uninspiring, uninteresting. Another pointless entry that this series could just do without. Alien is a great film, really great. It's full of shocks and surprises. Like I said already, there's that human element. The cast of it is so good, but the characters they play, even though there's not that much for them all to do because it's quite an ensemble, but they all come across as individual, as unique, as interesting. It's just so well done. If you're wondering, 2024's Alien Romulus would be here. It takes place between Alien and Aliens, but I haven't seen it at the time of recording, so we'll move on. There's two things about Aliens that are disappointing. The first is that because it also included the we can't let the alien get to Earth storyline from the first, that it becomes a staple for the series. And all of the other movies are just going to do that as well, even though when we see the Earth, in, in particularly in the last one, in Alien Resurrection, you go, why were they fighting so hard to stop the aliens coming here? So that's a little disappointing. The other thing that's disappointing is that it's so good that every militaristic science fiction film that came after is compared to it, and all pale in comparison so it's just so good that it's almost ruined science fiction for everybody else trying to make a movie in the genre outstanding again like alien the cast is really good none of them are given that much to do but they all still manage to be original and interesting as human beings great film absolutely love it alien 3 is a weird one because in the 90s, obviously, I watched the the original cut. And I remember thinking that there are a number of things about it that are quite disappointing. But overall, it's quite a good movie and certainly quite exciting in places. But what I watched in preparation for this video was unwittingly something called the assembly cut. And what that is, is the studio version, basically, of trying to fix the film. But... The film itself isn't badly done. And what I mean by that is that they had this script of like the space monastery that they all really loved, 
the, the studio and they were like we can make something of this but they're giving it to various people who are all trying to sort of put their own stamp on it but what they should have done is thrown it out but nobody had the, the courage to say this story is a bad idea so they're just putting different script writers to work on a bad story so it was never going to work but ultimately david fincher who's career at the time was based entirely around a few music videos was asked to come on board and direct which is quite a punt for a guy on his first film and i don't think that really he did anything particularly wrong like i said alien 3 is kind of watchable and quite scary and tense in places it's all right and i wouldn't have any real issue of going it's probably like prey bordering on a b or a c but the assembly cut is really well regarded on the internet and I'm going to have to go against that level of thinking because I could not stand it. It was so very, very long and I like that that gives some of the characters a little bit more development but ultimately this film needed to be shorter, not longer. Look, putting aside the assembly cuts, sort of the unfinished nature of it, it's just dreadful and I would put that much lower so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the difference between the two versions which thankfully leads us on to the last entry in the franchise because as mentioned a million times it doesn't get better than the one before it usually just gets worse and Alien Resurrection is a weird weird film there's they're clearly trying to copy Alien and it's like an inmates have taken over the asylum in space movie and they're also trying to copy Aliens and that we've got this gang of mercenaries. Again, what they had was they had a story they thought that'll work and they passed it around a whole bunch of scriptwriters when they should have just thrown it out and said to the scriptwriter, what have you got? Because the story here is worthless. And despite copying Alien and Aliens in different parts of the film, they've learned nothing from either. Basically then what you have is a bunch of mercenaries walking around and sitting around and chatting and there's never a sense of urgency, there's never a sense of tension and again you've got this perfect alien creature but it's not good enough for these guys, they know better than the people that made it and they have to fiddle with it so now we've got an alien giving birth like a mammal, it's just utterly unwatchable. This was the first alien film that I saw in the cinema and I still wonder if I can ask for a refund, it's so bad. In fact it's the first film that I think that I've seen with Sigourney Weaver in it, that I'm just like, couldn't you have not been in this? Couldn't you have just put your foot down and said, look, this is not going to work? And if you feel protectionist towards Alan Ripley, then you needn't, because as soon as they recast somebody else, they're going, the movie's going to bomb anyway. So they would then just have to come back to you and say, look, we're sorry, we screwed up. But this film is utterly awful. And the whole thing is, like, oh, we've got to stop the aliens getting to Earth. But then you see Earth in one cut, or in the other cut, they smash this massive spaceship into the planet and you cause a nuclear explosion, which you can see from space. So, oh, if you're so protective of the planet, why are you doing that? But then you see the Earth in the other cut. It's like, why were you so protective of this? This is a grim apocalyptic nightmare that nobody can wake up from, a bit like this film. Six in university is just your everyday, typical university. Nothing out of the ordinary ever happens here. There's no alien attacks, no homicidal houseplants, no meteor showers, no Cthulhu cults, no fatal field trips, and absolutely no alien professors. Enroll today and get this fabulous free pen.